name is JB from Joyfully Loving Grace blog. You can find the link to the blog in the description below. And today, this is my testimony. So my testimony is from new age to Jesus. Well, growing up, I grew up in a Christian home. We didn't go to church like that. We kind of went to church on, you know, those important days like Easter, um, Christmas, things like that. But my grandmother, she told us about the Ten Commandments. She told us about like you should do good things to other people. Where they have good things happen to you. Those other things. But I didn't have a solid relationship with God. I didn't know who Jesus really was. Like I knew that he died on the cross for our sins. I knew that he was a very important figure. That's how I kind of described it to myself. And that we should fear God. I remember that too. Like if you don't do x y and z you're gonna go to hell right so i had this kind of idea in my mind i prided myself big on not having sex until marriage it was just a lot of things that were just told to me but when i would question it a lot of times it was like don't talk about that no we don't know about that or no it's just the way it is so it was a lot of questions i had i was searching for something and I just didn't know what I was searching for, but I knew I was searching for something. I knew it was a lot of things that was unanswered. Around 2000, I can't remember the date. But I remember in college, I got baptized and I started going to church. Uh, I started seeing a lot of people who was in the church who would say one thing, but they was living another way. They would say, you shouldn't do this, but then everyone around me was doing these things. Um, I started having a little fellowship at my apartment, which was like a dorm thing, but it was like an apartment too. So I had some, um, roommates who were christian and to me and again they may watch this so i'm not condemning you guys anything but to me it was just like okay you are saying one thing but you are living another way so i was super confused right and i was just like well how how are you christian then right so questioning these things and just like well what is this and what is that and again no one was telling me to well find the answers in the bible or maybe you should talk to an elder or maybe you should do this or something like like it was still no one giving me answers so i started looking elsewhere the first rabbit hole i went down was i'm gonna call it the elites okay and i went down that rabbit hole because i was just like it's more to life than what TV tells me. It's more to life than what the news tells me. So a friend of mine's um, brought up to me that it's some powerful people in powerful places that were controlling things. We're gonna say that. I went down that rabbit hole really, really deep, like extremely deep. I was learning things about the things that these people were doing. And I started questioning like, well, why is this happening? Who is allowing this? And why is this being allowed? And what is this? And what is that? This is so wrong. I was still trying to be Christian though, but I couldn't find a church home. Most of the churches to me was very hypocritical. All the um, people that was in the churches was saying one thing, but doing another thing. So I kind of walked away and I kind of was just lost for a little while. I met some people who introduced me to Egyptology and they introduced me to ancient Kemet stuff and um our ancestors were these people and you should do this and you should do that i started going down that rabbit hole really really deep too for our books i was starting to do things i started believing things and even some of my christian people that i knew i started saying like well Haru was before Jesus and he was this and he was that and I was defending this I must say religion I was I found that first um and then I was on the path of like black power you know um power to the people you know <laughs> but I was on those two things for a little while I would say for about a year or two I believe it was a question I asked I cannot remember the question I asked but it was not a clear answer 
and then I started getting confused and I was just like you know what some things are inconsistent you know there's some things that was inconsistent for me um again it's how some people were saying to do things but then they were acting a certain way um and then it was inconsistencies in some of the groups like it was some um people who believed in the Kemet stuff who was also saying like well our ancestors did this and our ancestors did that so we should do this we should do that but then it was some who was like totally pan african and was just like totally black for um, power to the people but they were being kind of chauvinistic or they were kind of being like well the man is supposed to do this and the man is supposed to do that and the woman should be subservient and it was some it was just some weird things that was going on and it was just making me question okay what am i doing so i stepped away from it After the Egyptology stuff, I started going down the path of like wanting to, I would say, heal my body or heal my mind. Um, around that time, I started being depressed again. I had um, dealt with depression around 2010, I believe, 2000. I can't remember the dates. But I know it was right after my sister passed away and right after my grandmother passed away, okay? So right after them two passing away, I went into a very deep depression. I knew what depression felt like. I knew what depression looked like. I knew what depression was. So when I left the Egyptology stuff, I went into a depression. And I started saying like, okay, what is this? What is that? Um, around that time, my teeth started hurting. I started having teeth problems around that time and i was like okay what can i do to heal my teeth what can i do to help my body out what can i do to heal my body and a lot of people who were in the pan-african community and in the egyptology community they were also about herbology and about taking care of their body and taking care and taking herbs and stuff to be natural in the body so I started going down that path. I started like learning about herbs and um, t talking to your body to heal it and that um, the environment that you create with your words are important um, to keep bad vibes versus keeping good vibes and being against GMO stuff and just being against all the things that was not for the body. When I went down that path, I started learning a lot, but then i met someone who started talking about like six protons six new um neurons in the body is 666 and we are like christ consciousness I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I was like, okay, let's see what this is about. And then I started being introduced to new age stuff. Once I started learning about the 666 stuff and about Christ consciousness, I was introduced to like the Kangalini spirit. I started being introduced to the higher self. I started being introduced to um, think positive or like law of attraction. Think Like it was like full blown whammy. It was like boom in your face. And I was just like, whoa, what is all this? But I started going down each road. I started going down each, a lot of those paths on what each thing was. So the first thing I was introduced to was um, the law of attraction. 
since I was dealing with wanting to heal my body, wanting to heal my teeth, I started saying things to my body, started saying things to my teeth, and started to believe that if I kept on saying those things to myself, that those things would happen. Yeah, if I just started to say those things, started acting those ways, started eating better, um, those things would help. I went vegan for a little while. I went vegetarian for a little while. However, my teeth were still hurting for the most part. And I was getting some relief. I did the, what's that, the coconut oil rinse. I was getting some relief, but I was still having pains and problems throughout my body. But I didn't know what it was. So, I was already introduced to psychics. I was already introduced to horoscopes because of, again, society. So, those two things didn't seem unusual to me. I was going to psychics. I was looking at my horoscopes all the time. The turning point for me was when I was introduced to Sage. I started to believe that Sage was going to take away these bad vibes that I was having in my apartment and in my room so I started saging everything by this time I was living in an apartment uh, with my boyfriend and I was saging up the place like I was saging all the rooms I was saging everything however I was still getting visitations from these dark spirits but I didn't know what they were I thought they were my friend at the time because I was talking to a friend of mine's and she told me that oh it's just that um if it's bad just do the sage and if it's good it would stay if it was bad it's gonna go so i truly believed it i had candles lit and i would do the saging one of these saging rituals like daily almost to make sure i kept these bad things away but after i would do it i still would feel a presence i would still feel this darkness around me but i didn't know what it was I then started to get into crystals right after that because again I was looking for something to keep these bad thoughts away to keep this bad um, energy away or this bad presence away to keep my mind straight I was I was depressed I was anxious a lot I started to play around with crystals and I then was introduced to tarot cards because I wanted to know what was really going on like what is next for me again still searching I started doing tarot cards um, I even started to say that I was going to do readings for people um, I think I put out one or two readings or something but I stopped doing but I was starting to get very serious with tarot cards. After tarot cards, I started to be involved with um, people that was actually calling themselves witches. And I started to be kind of in cahoots with these people. Not cahoots, but like I was talking to them on a regular basis. We were exchanging information. I was in certain groups with these people. And then I was introduced to, after tarot cards, I was introduced to spiritual baths. And the spiritual baths are done normally for full moons and new moons. And it's to evoke things that you want. So if you want more love in your life, if you want more money in your life, um, you take this bath and you pray over the bath. And then you were supposed to like pray as you're taking the bath and then when you finish taking the bath you pray and you like see it going all down so i did a couple of spiritual baths on the journey of trying to find health and healing modalities and then also trying to find truth i was introduced to reiki i was introduced to um what's that sounding bowls 
the spiritual baths also um, contain herbs and everything, so they were supposed to be healing modalities as well. Um, I was talking to a lot of people that were proclaimed witches. I was talking to a lot of people who were proclaimed um, practitioners of some dark magic and then some white magic. Yeah. The last thing that I did in New Age was Akashi Records. So the Akashi Records is supposed to be, um, it was, it comes from the Hindu or the Buddhist religion. And you are supposed to be able to go into this room. It's like a spiritual room that you can see your book of life. You can see everything that has ever happened in your life. And you can change, like you can't change anything, but you can kind of like, like heal certain parts of your life. Like if someone broke your heart or something, right? You can kind of like take back that soul tie and heal your heart, if that makes sense. So... the last the very last straw in my new age journey was when I was doing a session in one of the Akashi records um it was like a certification actually it was a certification and I was doing one of the like training classes that you're supposed to do for the certification and I was in the middle of one of the training well I was scheduled to do a session with this young lady that I was taking the class with and I don't know what made me think about it, but it was on my heart to ask, is Jesus real? Like that was, um, when we had the sessions, we could ask any type of questions we wanted and our spirit guides were supposed to answer the questions. Okay. Um, so I asked the question, is Jesus real? And I then was taken into, well, me and the young lady, we closed our eyes and we were taken into this area that look like heaven okay it looked like heaven um i saw a white gate with like all this gold i saw a gold like it looked like a golden town and then like the road was golden and then when we went in to the well i got to go into the room and she got to go in um with me um she said she couldn't even access this room, but with me, she could. So I thought that was weird. But when we went into this room, I saw like a lot of angels and one angel was talking to me and she told me that she was my spirit guide or the young lady told me she was my spirit guide. Then right after her, I got to talk to Jesus. Okay. And... He said, of course, I'm real. And he said that they all know I'm real. They know I'm real. And I am real. And I can't remember if I asked any other questions, but I was kind of floored by what I saw. Now thinking back on it, I definitely don't believe that's Jesus that I talked to but I do know that demons know that Jesus is Lord and that they tremble at his name so by me asking that question and them having to admit to that question solidified and brought forth my belief again in Jesus Christ and in God in that room also when I asked about Jesus they were trying to say other things to me but that kind of just went through my mind and after that session I was crying my butt off I went to my mom and I was just like mommy the wherever I was they said Jesus is real and she was like yeah I know I've been knew that and I was like, but I didn't know. Like, I didn't know that. And I was just like, New Age tell you it's this Christ consciousness. It's this thing out 
outside of you but yet Christ is supposed to be in you and that Christ Jesus Christ is this entity but he, they don't give him they don't give him the reverence to who he really is he is the messiah he is the savior he is the one who died for our sins right he is the only one that can save you from everything that you're going through he is the only one so for me after that i was just like everything i was doing is wrong i was super unhappy in new age i was super depressed i was super anxious i was super like where's my life going i always was having answer like questions nothing was giving me the satisfaction of the things that i was looking for like nothing the meditations the chakras the sage the tarot cards the crystals the readings nothing 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 <laughs> nothing was giving me the answers that i was looking for and i was always on this road of searching 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 so i had to get out i had to get out i was just like you know what i need to leave this stuff alone i'm still seeing these dark presences i'm still feeling this dark energy i'm still having my mind going crazy i'm still thinking one way but seeing other things i'm still not getting these answers i'm still not making this money i'm still not happy i'm still not this like i need to get away from this first time I turned away from Jesus I was just like well why did I turn away and I was like well it's because it was some questions that I need to answer and I couldn't get the answer right and the main question was who is he right first thing I remember that kind of moved me away was that the Egyptology had an answer for who this son was okay like what's the connection okay like what's the connection um, to all these other religions that have a mother a son and a father like what's the what's the connections like why is it so connected what am I missing where was the answers why is all this the same what is better than the other I still was on a search for answers, right? So then I came across this YouTube channel called Tree Fun Edit, and his link will be in the description below as well. But it was that video where he laid out everything. That video is so good. He laid out literally everything that I found but I didn't know what the connection was like I didn't know why all these other religions had so many things that were similar like why do almost every religion has a mother a father and a son like why is that right now I know it's because of Tam Moose and Nimrod after finding that information I started to read the Bible more I started to go and find fellowships more i started to find more videos i started watching truth and it like he was the church <laughs> uh no he probably wouldn't like hearing that but i did i started watching his videos like every friday i started watching his videos i started i found um revelations of jesus christ i found redefine tv i found all these channels that was starting to give me answers that i was looking for that was not traditional church but they was able to say the things that needs to be said outside of those four walls, right? So what I've come to realize is that Christianity is, is what I claim. I say that I'm a Christian, but I know it's bigger than that. I know it's bigger than the religion. It's bigger than what the church says it's really you it's really you with a relationship with jesus you with a relationship with god it's our relationship with him it's nothing more nothing less it's our relationship with him it's you getting into the word knowing who jesus was knowing who god is knowing what all this means 
that's what this is all about. I didn't want to cry, so <laughs> I try my best to keep my emotions at bay. <laughs> but I did want to tell my testimony. Um, if you guys want me to expand on any parts, please, 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 please leave your questions down below. Whatever questions you guys have, I'm going to try my best to answer. If it's really, really good or if it's a lot of people ask that question or a lot of people like those questions, then I might have to do a video on it. I don't know. But I was being obedient father put on my heart to do this testimony video so that's what I'm doing you know I pray that this has helped someone I pray that this has enlightened someone I pray that people who do know me maybe this gives you a little bit more information on why now I'm a follower of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and not of the world anymore I'm not doing none of that stuff anymore. I don't do no types of form of witchcraft anymore. None of them. Um, so yeah, I'm a changed person. I'm extremely happy now. I'm at peace. I'm not depressed anymore. I'm not anxious anymore. Um, and I'm happy. I can definitely say I'm happy. Pretty much all of my questions are answered. You know, the Bible is the living word. Yes, it may be old, but it is still it is still important for today. Like history repeats itself. Everything that is literally going on today has been done. Literally everything that is going on today can be found in the Bible. Literally everything. And I'm saying literally everything because it is literal. It is. Relationship with Jesus Christ. A relationship with the Holy Spirit. A relationship with God is the most important relationship you can have. God created Adam and Eve. He created each and every last one of us. He created this entire world. He knew us in our mom's wombs. He knows every hair strand on top of your head. It's an almighty God that we serve. It's an almighty God that created us. And for me, knowing that I have a personal relationship with that, a personal relationship with God, a personal relationship with Jesus. That is the most beautiful, profound, amazing thing you could ever ask for. And for people who are questioning, for people who are thinking like, well, that was her experience or like, still god is not real and all this other stuff like how can you explain the colors of the world how can you explain the sun coming up every day like clockwork how can you explain the moon coming up every day like clockwork how can you explain the clouds the sky color the trees how can you explain those things? It's something way grander, way more magnificent than any of us on this planet. And who that is, is God. Again, I pray that this has edified someone, this has confirmation for someone, this has helped someone. Again, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.